Hey guys, in this video I will tell you the most basic way to add furs onto the characters. Geometry head curves were first introduced in I think Blender 3.5. Then some versions later we got this edit fur feature, which is the combination of some curve modifier stack in the asset library. Very useful, but I don't use this fur method. I find it quite overwhelming for the beginners. And in this video I will approach the simple and the most straightforward way to add the furs onto a character. So guys, without any further ado, let's jump right into it. So here is our character. It's a baby Garfield sculpture. I have divided the character into several parts for the sake of this tutorial and making things simpler to explain. To add geometry hair curves, we have two options. Select the object you want to add the hairs, press shift A, curves, there are two options to select. If I select the furs, the furs are added. It's a pretty fast way to add furs, but I don't use this method, at least not for this character. Why? Because I want more control over the curves. If I click on the modifiers, it has all the geometry node modifiers. I will add them one by one explaining what they do. For now, I will delete the furs. I will add the empty head this time. While the curve is selected, I will hit Ctrl tab and select this curve mode. You can see all these tools here. This panel will let you add heads. This delete feature will let you delete the heads. One with the comb will let you comb the heads. I use the projecting option instead of the sphere. What it does is, for example, your heads on the back side. The sphere will let you comb the front heads, which are visible to the camera. Selecting the project will let you comb all heads at once. Regardless it has hairs on the back or not, it will just pick the curves all at once. Pretty fast for combing all hair at once. Now how do I approach adding furs in Blender? Well I keep it very simple. I will delete the curves and add them again. Hit Ctrl tab to go into sculpt mode. I will select the add and quickly add a single curve onto the face. In the modifier tab, I will delete this modifier and add set hair curve profile. You can see the shape of the curves has changed. This is the root of the curve and this is the tip. Changing the radius will increase the thickness of the curve from the root. Decreasing the shape will thicken the tip. If changed to a negative value, it will create the root thinner while keeping the tip thick. I will change the shape to 0.8 and reduce the radius more to at least 0.004. The strand is very thick at the moment. I will select the growth shrink, hold control and reduce the length of the curve. I will click add, select projected, go to curve shape and check the length. It will be unchecked by default. What it will do is, it will look at the length of the last added curve and add the same length curve on the model. I will just go ahead and click it once to add the curves, adding just a few curves having the gap between them. The design I am adding a few strands and not filling them with density brush, I will use a modifier called interpolate hair curves. And these curves will act as a guide of those generated density from the modifier. I'll show it to you. I will add a modifier called interpolate hair curves and the curves are gone. We need to assign the surface. Clicking on the eyedropper and we'll select the head. The density here will let us fill the head with heads. So changing it from 10 to 10,000 and let's see. The head is filled with heads. Remember I added those few strands earlier? I can just use the comb tool to comb those strands and the heads will follow. The fewer the strands, the easier it is to direct the heads. This is my approach to add furs or simple hair this way onto the characters. Simplifying is what I love the most. Just simplify your method and adding hairs will not be overwhelming for you to add. With fewer hair strands, it's easy for me to comb and direct the hairs. I will quickly add a material and see how it looks in the render mode. Setting up a hair principal BSDF. I don't use normal hair BSDF. Principal hair is more advanced and lately worked on more. I will connect the character texture into the node socket, turning the lights visible and the floor, which I added earlier. And let's see how the render looks like. The heads as you can see are pretty straight. The furs are never similar. We could add a freeze hair curve modifier onto it, but before that I want to change this yellow tint on the character. Maybe when I texture the character, I added a yellow paint onto the character. The hair BSDF is picking that color too. So I will quickly add a hue saturation node and connect between them. I will play with the hue settings a little bit and try to bring it to an orange side. Now getting back to heads, heads are in pretty similar shape and the direction. The evenness of each strand will never look good on first. So I will add a modifier called hair freeze. And you can see hair has started looking fuzzy and uneven, including the length, direction and the shape of the hairs have been changed a little bit. The Garfield character in the movie has hair something like this. If I stop at this stage, I am still pretty good. I can also add clumps to the hair. I will use a clump hair curve modifier and see how it looks. The problem with clump modifier is, it will look at individual hair curves which we added earlier and create lumps accordingly. So if you really want to add clumps, you might have to increase the curve strands. 
for this situation, I don't think Garfield Kalata has much glam on his hair. Usually, glams are added on the yellow stick first. Same thing goes for the hair curve noise modifier. I will add one quickly. It will add a noise onto the hair. Works best if used with frizz. It looks good in this situation, but I will not use it on those parts of the body where hairs are directional. I will show it to you in just a bit. Now these are modifiers. What I love about new hair geometry system is the workflow is totally non-destructive. I can just disable enable any modifier from the screen. So to revise what I did, first add an empty hair onto the object. Add few single hair strands. Add a set hair curve profile. Comb the hair and add interpolate hair curves and add density according to it. Add freeze hair modifier and hair noise modifier to further polish the first with unevenness. You can take these steps and apply to any character in which you want to add the heads. This tail for example. The modifiers I am adding can also be used from the assets library. Just drag any other extra viewport and change it into assets library. These small diagrams can help you show the meaning and use of these modifiers. One issue you could get into is, can you see this power? If we use the same method I've been showing, this part will also get covered with heads. So in order to not do that, we will use weight painting to strict this region of the mesh from adding the heads. As you can see, the heads are covering the power region too at this stage. So in order to weight paint, we will select the object first, hit control tab and go into the weight mode. I already have a vertex group with paint on it. I'll create a new one, I'll name it paint 2. The weight and strength is set to max and I will just paint the area with red. The red means positive, positive at its maximum. It can be used in particles, geometric nodes and bones. The red means in full effect in anything you are trying to add. Now I will turn the weight to zero and paint that area which I don't want the hairs to add. Now remember the vertex group name, we will use it on interpolate hair curve modifier. Now go outside from the weight mode and select the curve. Go to the interpolate modifier, can you see the density marks? Click it and enter the name of the vertex group, paint 2 and just enter it. I will enable the modifier and you can see the region we painted with blue is restricting the area from adding the heads. And guys this is it, my small approach to adding first onto the characters. Keep it simple, study your references, the Garfi character had a simple hairstyle so it was not a very complex thing to do. If you want me to create complex hair grooming and hair shapes in future like stylish female hair creations, let me know in the comments. Your support would be very helpful to me. You can go ahead and buy some of my models from my illustration store. This will help me improve the quality of the channel. Leave a like, comment and do subscribe to the channel. I'll see you in the next video. Peace.